Uh, Lucifer, the morning star. Matt, I'm going to need you to time me on my response to this I am because this is going to require a touch of a response. Okay. All right. Michael, you missed a point in your takedown of Sam Harris, which is a very relevant one. We know that torture directly led to the war in Iraq, and the violence question in the Middle East is essentially about insecurity and poverty. Harris's argument, uh, we will look at the terrorists who are rich and uh, Harris, yeah, Har- I understand what you're saying. Harris argues we will look at the terrorists who are rich and still blow themselves up. They always viewed themselves as champions of the poor and oppressed as their constituents. Uh, I actually disagree with you on the second part of that. Let me, let me explain why. And Matt, I let's see if we can keep this to two minutes, okay, Matt? All Got right. it. So I think there is no question on two things. And one, if we want to get specifically back to Sam Harris and specifically to the position that Sam Harris represents, it is a Islamophobic one. It is one that at best is is just disastrously simplistic um, and, 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 and has incredibly problematic policy consequences from support of the occupation to support of, um, uh, 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 foolish military interventions abroad. And if not those interventions, uh, then certainly um, anti-Muslim policies in the United States and Europe, which actually in some respects are more uh, directly relevant to the questions of terrorism if you're concerned about them in a certain sense. Now, what I would say is that I don't think a group like ISIS is a representative of the downtrodden and the repressed in the Middle East. I think that's really problematic discourse. So first of all, there are two types of simplicities at work, and one is a, is a much bigger problem than the other, but they both are not going to give you the answers you need. So one simplicity is the Sam Harris Islamophobic thing, which is that, you know, there's this horrible holy book, and these people are terrible, and you know, and, and Islam is the mother load of bad ideas, and blah 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 blah. And you know, there's over a billion people on the planet essentially that need to be bombed, surveilled, um, uh, or or just have their religion mocked, uh, and and that's it. There's no history, there's no economics, there's no politics, there's no uh, policy questions, there's no geopolitics, there's nothing. That's essentially what it boils down to for them. Now. On the other hand, there is a viewpoint that I have a lot of sympathy for because we have been such bad actors in the Middle East, in Africa, in South Asia, that says all of this is simply a byproduct of U.S. foreign policy now, or Western foreign policy. Now, there's some truth to that. Without the invasion of Iraq, I don't see how you have ISIS. Now, that said, ISIS is fundamentally a reactionary movement that's about preserving a Sunni elite status in Iraq and Syria. That's what flew out of it, as well as extreme Salafist fundamentalism, which is a problem. And it does engage in, in horrific human rights abuses. So we need to look at all of these variables together and not dismiss any of them, um, in, in order to get to the smartest answers. That's the best I can give you right now, but I'm happy to talk about it more. 